Um, uh, thanks for taking the time out of your day today to join us. I do want to take just a few moments to, to cover a little bit about what we're going to be covering today and some housekeeping notes before we dive too deep into the webinar. So first off, um, we are recording this session today. And so if you have any specific questions um, or, or you feel like you need to take feverish notes about these things, don't worry too much about that. We will send out the webinar to everyone who registered um, yes, uh, tomorrow. Um, and so you'll have the full recording um, that you, you can access. Um, in addition, we want this to be fairly interactive. See, I already have a couple of questions that have come in. That's great. Um, please ask questions throughout. If, if me or Brad from Classy says something that is um, that that's piques your interest or you'd like to know more, please go ahead and just pop over to the go to webinar control panel and you'll see a questions tab. Open that up and jot your question there. Um, we will try to answer as many questions as possible. If it's a really in-depth question um, or something that's really, really specific, we may get back to you after the webinar. So we, we may not jump into every question um, that gets asked, but no, we, we, we can download those after the fact and we can answer them. Last thing I want to hit on before we jump into this is I want to make sure you understand what we're going to go through today. So um, starting off, this, if you've been to any of our webinars before, you probably know that we do a lot of thought leadership and we bring a lot of information about how you can better your fundraising and things like that. Today is going to be a little bit more tactical. So we are going to go through some of those things. Brad from Classy is going to jump in. And he's going to go through some stats they've learned and they recently published through their uh, uh, a study they recently did. Um, but then we're really going to dive into the tools themselves. And so today's um, uh, webinar is going to be a little bit more tactical where we dive into Classy itself as a tool. Brad's going to show you a live demo of um, how you can improve your fundraising with a tool like Classy. And then we're going to jump into how does that data come over to a CRM like Kindful and how can you access that data and actually take some actions with it. Of course, you can take some actions in, in Classy as well, but what is the power of using the two tools together? All right, so I just want to make sure that if you're used to us, you know, not really dump, jumping into a tool and getting in-depth into like actual product, today's going to be a little different where you're going to do that. So I just want to make sure if you're here, you understand what we're diving into. And so um, just to tell you who we are and uh, what roles we serve on um, uh, with, with our respective teams at Kindful and Classy, my name is Bradley Martin. I'm the Senior Director of Customer Acquisition here at Kindful. I oversee um, uh, our marketing and sales efforts, and I get the joy of, you know, uh, every now and then getting to speak on some of these webinars and presenting some things that we think are pretty cool. cool. And I uh, have the benefit to be able to talk with another Brad today, uh, Brad Krasakis, um, who's the director of training at Classy. Class, um, Brad, do you want to tell a little bit about what you do there at Classy? And then I can just let you take it from here as you're going to jump into some information about Classy and, and some of this things, uh, stats and stuff you guys have recently published. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Bradley. So yeah, my name is Brad. Um, great to be presenting with another Brad. So uh, <clears throat> like Bradley mentioned, I'm the director of training over here at Classy. Uh, I've been at Classy for just around 10 years. So since almost the beginning of the company. So I've had the unique opportunity to work with literally thousands of nonprofits of all shapes, sizes, and budgets to help them uh, not just evaluate Classy, but evaluate all types of technologies. So I've had a lot of different roles, everything from customer service for a while to sales roles to marketing roles and everything in between. Um, and in my current position, which is really exciting, I get the opportunity to work with uh, our internal team here, which is about 220 people, and we get to train them on Classy. We get to train them on nonprofit space and, and all the great things that, um, that you folks are doing out there. So that's my my role today and I'm super excited to be here and, and speak with all of you. All right, so we're going to get started here. Like Bradley mentioned, um, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about some really unique numbers that we found um, recently launched uh, a few months ago, but quickly before we dive into that, in case you're unfamiliar with who we are, so Class is an online fundraising platform, if that part isn't obvious, but uh, we're based out of San Diego, California, We've been around for about 14 years or so um, in its entirety, and we focus on a few things. Uh, we're really focused on helping nonprofits 
of literally all sizes, some very small, some very big, and helping them to engage their supporters online in really creative ways uh, by helping them to engage supporters for the very first time, keep those donors as long as possible, uh, recruit and maintain recurring supporters, uh, enable uh, fundraisers to raise money in your behalf through peer-to-peer -peer giving, uh, and then we've got some great tools uh, on the back end that help you build these beautiful campaigns and then integrate it into your CRM, just like Kindful. So I'm super excited to walk you through the product, but first, uh, we wanted to go over some really unique uh, numbers and analysis that we found through our most recent report, uh, which is our second annual State of Modern Philanthropy. So if you are familiar with us, you might even be familiar with this report already. So this is 2019's report, which is data from 2017 and 2018. So we have a pretty big data point here. And the goal of this uh, SOMP, as we call it, uh, was to do a focus on return supporters. Uh, our very first State of Philanthropy, Father modern philanthropy was really focused on the first time someone gives uh, what that type of interaction was like conversion rates all that great things but we really wanted to focus this time on what about donors who come back and donor retention is such a huge talking point it's such a big issue for many nonprofits without focusing on these areas would be really impactful and so Obviously, as you probably can imagine, the data from this report is across just classy clients of about 3,500 or so, uh, and they, uh, again, run the gamut of all different sizes of organizations. So I pulled four uh, really interesting things that I thought were super impactful, and then what we'll do is when we dive into the product, we'll kind of that speak to each of those numbers, and I think hopefully you'll find them helpful as well. So this was one of the big takeaways that we found uh, when we conducted our analysis from the last couple of years. Uh, and follow along with me because the wording is a little bit complex, uh, the first time that you read it, but it'll sink in. So of return donors, who donors who came back and gave again, 25% 25 25 of them gave another one-time donation after already giving a recurring gift in the same year. So to break that down and, and to think about it for a second, this basically means that if you have a supporter that came and gave and signed up to be a recurring donor, which means that in our case, they were giving every single month of varying amounts, 25% of that entire group came back and gave again an additional one-time gift on top of their already active recurring donation. And there's a couple things that we took from this. One, I think we all know that recurring donors are incredibly impactful to our organization. They create sustainable streams of revenue, uh, cash that we can have to impact our programs now, uh, and they also allow us to prepare for the future uh, based on funds that will eventually be coming in. So we know that they're valuable. Uh, we also know, and if you've ever watched the Kasi webinar or attended any of our sessions, uh, you know that we talk a lot about um, lifetime value of recurring supporter being so much higher. And part of that is because Donors today like to give small monthly amounts versus large upfront gifts. Uh, small micro donations is how we basically pay for everything today. So it's a very comfortable ask. But the biggest takeaway from here, honestly, is that oftentimes when we get a recurring donor to give to our nonprofit, we sort of, sort of assume that our work is done. And we've got that person signed up. That's amazing. We've got their money coming in. Uh, they're impacting our programs every day. But we're here to tell you that based on these numbers that we found, you should be interacting with them throughout the year. And there's a pretty high likelihood, a quarter, uh, one fourth chance that they come back and give again, uh, which is crazy to think about. Powerful to know that your group of recurring supporters today has the opportunity to continue to give outside of even that monthly uh, sustainable donation. So uh, that was a really powerful uh, thing that we wanted to touch on. Uh, our second takeaway focused a lot on peer-to-peer -peer giving. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising is a huge aspect of what we do. Uh, many of our most successful organizations leverage peer-to-peer -to, -peer to not just raise more money, but acquire brand new donors uh, because it can do both very, very well. Uh, and this was a, actually my favorite side of the four that we're gonna talk about today, which is returning fundraisers. So fundraisers who fundraised maybe last year and came back and fundraising again, typically raise more than twice as much as the first time that they fundraise on the platform, over 126%, which is crazy um, to think about how much impact that a return fundraiser can have on your organization. And here's what we sort of drew from this analysis. 
we have a tremendous opportunity on our hands as nonprofits to nurture these folks and make sure that they come back. Because really, if I know we talk a lot about donor retention, but fundraiser retention is super critical. And we know that if we can get these fundraisers to come back a second time, I mean, look at how much they can do for us. But if we're constantly churning out fundraisers and getting a new crop in every year, every year, every year, well, that's great from an acquisition standpoint. Uh, the impact that they could potentially have is less. And so we should really focus on not just retaining our donors year over year, but our fundraisers too. And the way that we do that, and at least the way that I think is really impactful, is by the very first experience that a fundraiser has. Uh, so I'll give you an analogy that I typically like to use. Let's say that you go to a restaurant, you've never been there before. The food is incredible, but the service is awful. Uh, bad service, lengthy wait times, people are rude. Do you go back? Do you tell your friends about it? Probably not. And that's because the first experience that you got, even though it was meaningful, meaning that in that case, the food was good, but in your case, your cause is good. Uh, the first experience wasn't enough uh, to get them to come back. And so one thing we're going to demo today and walk through is how important that very first fundraising experience is to retention, not just for donors, but also for fundraisers. So this one's really interesting. This is the third uh, point that we took away from our analysis, which is 19% of return donors. So again, that's donors who came back and gave again, gave a second donation within three months of giving that second time. So basically three donations is what we're talking about. Uh, so think about that for a moment. You've got a donor who's coming back again, uh, probably about a year later, I think is what we found is the median, where a typical second time donor is coming back about a year later, which makes sense, probably coming back for Giving Tuesday or an appeal that you typically do or some way that they always support you. But we found that of those, just under 20% of supporters come back and give again in uh, a three month span. Uh, I think. We, we worry a lot about donor fatigue and we worry a lot about consistently hitting up the same folks over and over again. And we're not telling you to hear that you should you know, beat them over the head with appeals, but we are here to say that there is an opportunity here to engage return donors sooner than you might already be doing. Uh, and we know that because if a supporter feels like they're making a large impact, there's really nothing keeping them from potentially giving again. And we see this a lot in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising where Fundraisers are the one making the uh, direct appeals, uh, but it can fall on the organization too to take advantage of that. Uh, and so really great stuff here from this takeaway. This one's a little bit more detailed, but interesting to know that 19% of donors come back and give again so soon. That just means that, I mean, there's 81% of supporters out there that don't that we should potentially be reaching out to. All right, and the last takeaway before the demo, and uh, we get into the product and the integration, which I know you're here to see. Uh, and this is the Giving Tuesday stat. We know that Giving Tuesday is coming up very, very soon. In fact, uh, you might have already launched your Giving Tuesday campaign uh, in a sort of soft launch format. But we found that on our platform in particular, organizations raise four or get four times as many new donors on that day than any other day throughout the year. Uh, we know that Giving Tuesday is popular. We know that organizations raised over $400 million online last year in the United States alone. Uh, and hopefully you know that Giving Tuesday is one of these initiatives that you can't really sit on the sidelines for anymore. And if you're in the camp, and believe me, there are plenty where you're thinking Giving Tuesday saturated, everyone's there, what's the point? This is a great uh, indication of there's always a reason to get involved. Uh, at the very least, you could get some new supporters that you didn't have already before, even if you're not raising a ton of money. Those folks enter your network, they can go into Classy, they can go into Conful, and you can begin to build relationships with those folks. So I'm here to tell you from my 10 years of experience so far, Giving Tuesday is a requirement for every organization because it literally cannot hurt you, it can only help. And I'm excited to show you some classing Giving Tuesday examples today on the demo. Um, so that was everything uh, from the state of modern philanthropy that I wanted to go through before we get into the product. I don't know, Bradley, if, if there's anything else you wanted me to answer or touch on before we dive into the demo. Yeah, we did have one question from Mark and it was, you know, what what means of continued interactions do you recommend? So I think like on your takeaway number two, you were talking about continually staying in front of those um, uh, organizations. How do you recommend doing that? Yeah, there are so many different methods. Uh, obviously, uh, you have the age old methods of, um, you know, email appeals and social media. We find that it's really helpful to be able to segment your supporters into how they gave to you the first time. And so typically what we see is, you know, we get a, 
a group of supporters who come in and then we now or maybe some sort of appeal later on. But what we're here to tell you is that one of the more powerful things that you can do, which Kindful can of course help you with, is segmenting your supporters into unique groups based on how they gave to you the first time. We know that most donors give to specific programs because they want to make an impact into something that they care about. They're less likely to give to entire nonprofit, but more to something very detailed. So put those folks into a group uh, and then send them a communication to show them the impact that they've had and how far an additional donation can really take that specific program. Oftentimes I see from the appeals that I even get as a supporter of many nonprofits that I'm being asked to give to the organization, which is, is great, but I'm more encouraged to give to something very specific because I've already done it. And I know that I want to support that initiative again. So something I think about is grouping your supporters into how they gave to you before and using that as your reach out point um, versus trying to uh, cast a wide net. Good question. Yeah, I think that's great. And if, if you don't mind me adding to that real quick, Brad, like I think to your point, <clears throat> one of the biggest things you can do um, to help people want to give again is show the impact of the money they've already given, right? And so, as you know, as you uh, have a program or something that you've been raising funds for, even if it were, like, let's say it was even maybe something as simple as like a building fund, right? Show the progress of where the money's going, like as that pro you know that's being built, or 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 what is the result of the money that someone has given, and how is it making an impact in people's lives? I think that is such a great way to get people um, that doesn't always have to be an ask. So I think definitely making sure you're just continuing to tell that story is one of the most important things. Cool. Yeah, great points. Um, really great question too. So, and if you have any other questions, send them over and we can always answer them offline. Uh, I also realize that my screen might be slightly delayed. So if I'm talking ahead of the slide, um, that's why, but I'll try to go slow so that we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. Okay, so before we get into the demo, we wanted to quickly show you sort of the array of tools that we provide nonprofits like you folks on the phone, and then we'll literally show you what those products look like. I think I'm still a little bit delayed. It looks like it's coming through okay now. Um, okay. Sorry about that, folks. I'm here on the, uh, the Classy Fundraising Suite slide. Okay, cool. All right. Great. So uh, this is the overview of the classy suite of tools is what we like to call it. And it lives sort of in three core layers. Uh, the first one is our sort of campaigns. These are the different type of campaigns you can run on the platform, everything from peer to peer to events and donations. And then Passport is our international product, which allows you to not only um, display giving pages in multiple currencies, but also accept donations in those currencies. So um, most of our nonprofits are here based in the US, but we do have some international causes out there. Everything that we do lives on top of the backend suite of tools, which is what we call Classy Manager. And Classy Manager is where you build all of your campaigns, uh, where you manage your donations, where you run reports. Um, it doesn't take the place of a CRM. It fits really nicely on top of it. We like to refer to it as donation management or as kind of full can be your donor management. And the, the two systems work really well. And then finally, everything sits on top of our uh, really powerful API, uh, which is one of few awards, which is really cool. Uh, and the API is exactly what allowed us and Kindful to work together and to build uh, a powerful integration. Uh, and it also allows you as the nonprofit organization that might be using these tools to leverage the API yourself and build custom integrations that work best for you uh, and leverage the data that you'd be getting from both platforms um, to use in whatever way makes the most sense. So that's a little bit about Classy. Uh, for the sake of today's walkthrough and for the sake of time, we're gonna focus on a couple things. We're gonna focus on donations, obviously. Um, we're gonna focus on Giving Tuesday, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising based on some of the stats that we found. And then we'll dive into the back end of Classy Manager and show you some of the high-level tools. Uh, we won't take too much time. I wanna make sure that Bradley has enough opportunity to walk through the integration, which is why we're here. So, hey Bradley, can you confirm that you see uh, a bright pink page in front of you? I just wanna make sure it's catching up. Yep, that's okay. what I see. Okay, cool. So, um, we'll start with donation pages and one of the unique parts about Classy is that you can create 
an unlimited amount of giving forms that are completely personalized to not only the organization, but the appeal that you might be doing. Uh, in this case, Bright Pink, which is a really great organization based out of Chicago, uses Classy for a number of fundraising initiatives, but primarily for their main giving option, which is obviously the donate button on their website. So I wanna quickly show you the interaction between a website from nonprofit and then where Classy kicks in. So it's right here, click donate. And then you're automatically brought to the classy giving experience is sort of what we call it. And we'll give it a second to load here. Uh, so within classy, you can create custom branded donation forms that are completely personalized to the organization. Just give it a second to load. Like my Wi-Fi is having some trouble. Of course, technology company, bad Wi-Fi. <laughs> right, there we go. So um, as you'll notice, the branding is really important. Uh, we try to make sure that everything is branded completely to the organization, from the domain to the favicon and the tab, all the way to the footer at the bottom, everything is completely branded to you. And then once they arrive on the form, we wanna make sure this form is super streamlined, super simple, it enables them to check out in a variety of ways quickly. Everything is also completely mobile responsive. One of the things you might or might not notice about this form is that there's really no exits here. Uh, basically, when you arrive on the form, because you told Bright Pink you wanted to give, there's really only one thing left to do, and that's complete your donation, unless, of course, you exit out of the page entirely. The reduction of those exits really helps conversion rates uh, and helps donors get through this process quickly. But I really want to focus on the giving experience itself, because I think when we look at a checkout form, we're thinking, big deal. Select how much you want to give, put in your credit card, and get out of here. Uh, and while that's technically true, this is really a giving experience. And we may get them the first time, but how do we make sure we get them again? And it's about how fast and easy this is the very first time they do it. So as a donor, I can come in, learn a little bit more about the org, decide how much I want to give. Maybe I want to select a custom amount, and I can donate that right here. I can decide if I want to make a one-time or recurring donation, talk about recurring just a moment and the power there, and also donate in honor of or memory of a loved one. I can even send an e-card uh, on behalf of that individual, uh, which ties both people into the cause, and actually you're allowed to uh, report on both sets of data, so you collect the information from the recipient as well. Put in some information about myself. The organization can also collect any pieces of custom information they want to collect from their supporters, uh, and you can make those fields required or not required. And then finally, they put in their credit card information, and they can donate, uh, as well as electing to cover the transaction fees on behalf of the organization. And that's it. Uh, it takes just a couple seconds to get through the form if you've got your credit card out, ready to roll. Again, everything's mobile responsive. After someone gives, uh, they'll be able to share their gift right away on Facebook or Twitter or by email. Uh, they'll automatically get uh, a confirmation with the tax deductible receipt. And then of course, all the data will flow uh, into Kindful for you as well as in the Classy Manager. So you can leverage it in a couple different spots. As I'm sure you can see, it's very straightforward and very simple. Uh, and the idea is to really cater to what people are used to. That sort of up down scrolling motion is really what people use on Instagram and Facebook every day. So it speaks to how they typically interact on the web. The last, the second thing I wanted to show you on donation forms uh, is how far we can go with recurring giving. So this is a really cool nonprofit that has actually been a part of Classy for a long time, uh, almost as long as I have. This is Operation Broken Silence, a really cool nonprofit. Uh, and they're doing something that many of our nonprofits have begun to do in the last couple of years, which is segment out their recurring supporter network by enabling them to give in a very unique way. So instead of just having a donate button where people arrive on the form and then they decide one time or monthly, instead they make recurring giving seem almost like an exclusive group. And in this case, they call it the renewal, where you can invest in the people that they're helping every single month. And then what's cool is that when you click into this donation form on Classy, it's gonna create a custom donation form just for monthly givers joining the renewal program. And you'll even notice that we completely remove the option to even give a one-time donation. And that really helps increase conversion rates and gets recurring donors get through this process quickly. Uh, and so if you think about it this way, 
This support already told us they wanted to give every month. That's why they click join. Let's make that the only option. And so again, this, this speaks to the fact that on Classy, you can create unlimited donation forms, brand them in different ways, customize the calls to action. You can even customize the thank you and confirmation language to be specific to who's giving to these initiatives. And so when we talked about uh, returning donors, getting them to come back, this first experience can be leveraged in the second and third and fourth experience too. Uh, so I wanted to focus on this um, and then, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys found this helpful. So next up, we wanted to talk a little bit about Giving Tuesday. Uh, obviously, we talked a lot about Giving Tuesday during the presentation, how important it is and, and what the opportunity is there. But we also wanted to show you how nonprofits are taking advantage of Classy to build their Giving Tuesday specific initiatives. And so this is Water for Good. This is last year's campaign. Uh, they haven't yet launched this year's campaign. But Water for Good is using a part crowdfunding. And crowdfunding is such a ubiquitous term. It gets kind of thrown around in different ways. The way that we define it is the ability to create a custom landing page. Uh, built entirely within the Classy platform with your custom branding and domain, everything's here. Uh, but uh, it's a great way to sort of provide more content and information to a potential supporters. In this moment, we are salespeople, right? Uh, our development team is trying to convince a supporter they should give us their money. And the really way to do that is through imagery, content, and um, appeals. And so I love these pages because you can really customize them in whatever way that you want. So they use really beautiful graphics. Uh, they use a progress bar, which isn't necessary for their Giving Tuesday campaign. You can see they did a great job. Uh, they have really simple designs, really clear calls to action. Um, and then they use something called impact tiles, which a lot of our nonprofits use, which allow us as the organization to clearly indicate to a potential supporter how much even a small monthly gift can take us. Uh, and again, these don't really go as far as like restricted or unrestricted funding. These are just saying, hey, listen, if you provide even $5 a month, look what you're able to provide um, to people in Sudan. And so it's a really powerful way for us to more effectively help a donor understand, hey, even $5 goes a really long way. I love this campaign. Another campaign that uh, on Giving Tuesday that really, uh, caught my eye, uh, that one that we talk about all the time is students helping Honduras. And I love this one because they use such big, beautiful graphics. This is a bit of a smaller campaign. The goal was very small, only $2,000. But you know, when we're talking about whether you should participate in Giving Tuesday, a couple thousand dollars is great, but it probably was made up of a few dozen donors. And those donors now become part of your network. They go into your CRM and can be leveraged in the future. Uh, so I like this one. They use really cool images um, of these great, adorable kids, which is always a great way to um, tell your story. Nice big text, just images, really. And then get, and then what they do a really good job of is translating uh, a small donation of four dollars a month, which is really just a cup of coffee. And I think we all know the the cup of coffee ask. Uh, and sometimes it hits, sometimes it misses. But if you can weave it into a a story like this one, I think it really makes a good impact. So uh, they use the impact tiles uh, in a really nice way. They're very clear, uh, $40 a month, fresh fruits and veggies. Really straightforward, but it helps me understand that um, even a small donation can go a long way. So that is Giving Tuesday on the platform. Uh, on Classy, we see a lot of different ways people are doing this, either through this sort of crowdfunding campaign or through a regular donation form or just changing their single donation form they have today and just including a Giving Tuesday logo. We've got a ton of resources on it. You can check it out. I think it's classy.org forward slash giving dash Tuesday, uh, I believe is the URL, something like that. You guys can Google it. I don't remember, but um, it's out there and we've got tons of free resources. So you should check that out. Okay. So we've covered donation forms and the first giving experience and how it affects return donors. Uh, we talked about recurring supporters and I wanted to briefly touch on this real quick. I think I glanced over this. So when a recurring donor does become a supporter uh, through Classy, you have some really great tools to your advantage. One, um, they're automatically stored in the back end where you can track how much they've given over time. You can also track their credit card expiration dates so that you can uh, manually track when they're going to approach expiration. And what's great is that either you as the admin or the donor has access to control their recurring donation. So if someone's card is about to expire or it does, We'll notify them and then you can go ahead and update it or they can. So some really great tools because 
we truly believe that attractive recurring, attracting recurring donors, super critical, keeping them even more important. Because once they bounce out of the system, the likelihood of you getting them back goes down. So let's make sure we keep them as long as we can. When we get into the back end, I'll show you some of these tools. But the last forward-facing example we wanted to talk about was peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, you might have heard of Team Rubicon, really great organization. Uh, it's basically a group of veterans who are now first responders to natural disasters. Uh, they've been with us for a long, long time, uh, about eight years or so. And you've probably seen them on the news recently uh, because of Hurricane Dorian and many of the other efforts that they're providing um, in the Bahamas and here in the U.S. But uh, what's really great about TR is that they include a ton of different ways for people to fundraise and get involved with them throughout the year. Because for I'm sure, which is the same for many of you out there, for an organization that's responding to a disaster or needs money quickly, you can't just spin up a campaign and wait for money to come in. You already have to have it. Uh, and so that's why they focus a lot on peer-to-peer -peer and a lot on recurring giving. So they have money when they need it. But one of the things that they do really well, which we see a lot of, is they provide a DIY fundraising opportunity where people can come and fundraise for anything that they want, uh, for their birthday, uh, for an athletic event in their community, for um, a person that they might have lost or cared about. We see this a whole lot. So this you're looking at is like, okay, I get that. That's not new. Um, but the experience when someone does actually begin fundraising is really where it kicks in. So I wanted to show you mine. Uh, so I'm from Los Angeles and we get, you know, some pretty bad fires every year, unfortunately, but last year we had some especially bad ones uh, in an area where I live and my parents live and they were evacuated. Everyone is fine, but I really wanted to do something and um, I'm not, I don't live there anymore. I live in San Diego. And so, and as I'm sure, you know, getting on the 405 is not a good idea. So uh, I wanted to stay in here, but I wanted to support them. So I decided to quickly spin up a personal fundraising page for Team Rubicon and start fundraising because I know that the dollars I raised would directly impact my own community. But I wanted to do it in a digital way. And so I created my fundraising page. As you can see, it's completely branded to them, but it allows me a lot of personalization. So I can add in my picture here, I can set my fundraising goal, and I can use a really easy editor, which I'll show you in a moment, to personalize this page. I can add in my own story, my own text, my own pictures, and then as people donate, uh, they appear right here in this activity wall, very similar to a Facebook type experience where people can comment as they give and allows me as the donor and you as the organizer to come in and also comment. And comments uh, also equal emails exchange between both parties. And I love this because this sort of speaks to sort of that digital HQ that you can create within a fundraising campaign. Uh, so I love this one, I wanted to shout this one out. So this is the power of peer-to-peer -peer, literally in just one little screen. Uh, I fundraised for this one, obviously. Um, we know that Hurricane Harvey was a pretty big deal a couple of years ago and, and Team Rubicon was a big part of the disaster relief efforts. So I shared out my page on Facebook, my friend Pat took my page, shared it on his Facebook, and this person uh, who chose to remain anonymous gave 10464, which is 100 plus uh, the transaction fees that they covered. Uh, and they don't know me, I don't know them. Uh, we have no connection to each other outside of this organization, and he or she decided to donate. Uh, and now this person uh, becomes a contact to Team Rubicon that can be leveraged in the future. So pretty incredible to see the power that peer-to-peer -peer can have. So I just quickly wanted to show you what it looks like to manage a page like this one. So if I want to update my picture or my videos, I just use a really nice WYSIWYG editor. At any point in time, I can modify the details of my page. I can change the picture, the headline, the goal. I can even remove my page if I need to. And this entire page is mobile responsive. So everything will automatically respond to a mobile device. We know that in peer-to-peer -peer sharing is super important too. So Facebook, Twitter, email built directly in. And then in a mobile view, we also provide a text to share option. So this automatically becomes available in the mobile view, allowing you to text out your fundraising page to whomever you are in your um, address book. All right, a couple more minutes, then we'll wrap up. And I wanna make sure you guys have enough time to see the integration. So real quick, we touched on, before we get to the classy manager side, we touched on a little bit about how recurring donors can manage their own recurring gifts and what that looks like is right here. 
So as a recurring supporter, I can see that I have a ongoing monthly donation to Team Rubicon in this case. And let's say that I changed out my credit card or it expired, but I wanna make sure my gift remains uninterrupted. I can go ahead and change that information here and it'll keep going indefinitely. Uh, admins on the back end, which I'll show you in just about 30 seconds, have the same functionality plus a few things, which is great. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the back end. Um, really excited to show you uh, how to actually create and build campaigns on Classy. I think sometimes there's an assumption that, all right, just show me some beautiful campaigns. Great, I don't have that type of time. Neither do I. Um, but these campaigns are super easy to create and uh, you can basically create a beautiful campaign in 30 minutes or less if you have all of your content ready to go. So um, this is Classy Manager. I wanna show you how to quickly build a campaign. We'll just go into one that's already have sort of a template designed for us. This is my Adopt a Rhino campaign. So if you're, um, if you like rhinos, this is going to be good for you. But it's really easy. I fill out some details about my campaign, like the name of the campaign, what the goal is. I can assign people to run this campaign specifically. I can even add some custom questions and FAQs to the checkout form. When I'm ready to design my page, I can actually design each part of the campaign uh, in a unique way. So in this case, this is a crowdfunding campaign. So I can design the landing page, the donation form, and the thank you form. Now, instead of just creating one drip down template that touches everything, each one can be different. Uh, and this is especially helpful for some bigger campaigns like peer-to-peer -peer or um, an event where you've got multiple ways of people interacting with you. But check this out. In the builder, I've got two ways that I can build a campaign. One is super simple and easy, and one is a lot more configurable, depending on what you're looking to do and the resources you have available. So in the setup mode, which is what we're on now, it's just a drag and drop inline editor. So I can change my text here. Uh, you can see the changes are reflected in real time. I can add in a background image, YouTube or Vimeo videos, or even just images here. I can create those cool impact tiles that we noticed uh, that we saw earlier in some of those Giving Tuesday examples. And then I can add in some text about the campaign. Literally, if you wanted to create an entire campaign right from here, you could. But in the designer, I've got a few more configurable options available to me. And this is really fun for some nonprofits. So here, I can get a little bit more customizable. So I can go into the header image, for example, and modify things like the shape and style of the buttons, the opacity rate on the image. I can blur the image or move the logo from one side to the other. I can also take my content blocks and I can rearrange them. I can delete them and I can create brand new ones too. Text blocks, or if you have the opportunity in your organization, you can also do custom design directly into your campaign. Uh, so if you have these resources, you can definitely take advantage of that. All right, and the last thing we're gonna, or last two things we're gonna touch on is recurring giving and then reporting just real quick. We talked a lot about managing recurring supporters and making sure that we can keep those uh, uninterrupted. So this is how you do that. Every recurring supporter has what's called a recurring plan that tracks their history, their card information, how much they're giving, and most importantly, their credit card expiration date. I can also do a lot of um, modifications here. I can change the amount that they're giving. I can set an end date to their recurring donation or even modify the processing date or cancel the gift altogether. Or, and one of the most frequently asked questions here is, can I change what campaign this recurring donation is going to? Uh, so let's say someone creates their Giving Tuesday recurring donation, but you want to put it on your sort of more general funds, you can do that very easily right here. All right, last thing, which would be a good segue into the integration piece, is the reporting. So I mentioned earlier, the way to think about classy reporting is donation management versus donor management. So this allows you to get a really detailed view of transaction history, campaign performance, so you can run those reports, get that data instantly, and then take actions. For example, if you need to move a donation, refund somebody, or you just wanna quickly see how your campaigns are doing, you can do that. All this data can be custom sort and filtered. You can be, it can be exported. Uh, you can save reports and share them with the Eternals team members. So a lot of really great stuff in here. So I think that covered everything I wanted to go through. Um, any questions before I send it back over to Bradley and the Kindful team? Hey Brad, one, one thing that was asked um, is how, um, and this might be something you want to tackle like individually with Tammy or, or after the call, but can you give kind of like an overarching thing of uh, how you guys are a little different than like CrowdRise or GoFundMe? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. So really good question. I'll give you like the bird's eye view. But um, one of the things that we're really focused on that, um, you know, is probably a little bit unique to a lot of other platforms or some other platforms is that we're focused on really what the supporter needs to see and feel and go through in order to feel like they're they're doing something that speaks to them. So we focus a lot on the supporter experience. So um, every button that they press, uh, all the load times, uh, how they respond to fields, how it responds to a phone. Uh, we started as supporters ourselves. That's sort of where the world that we came from. So the lens that we look through is the supporter lens. Uh, so we go as far to even making the event checkout experience really beautiful and, and nice. And so I think one thing that you'll find that you might like about Classy um, is that we really pay attention to those things. And then another thing that you might be looking at, which I'm sure is important to you and many other nonprofits, is the type of support that you get from an organization like us. Uh, so we've got incredible support teams that are actually dedicated in three different ways. We've got a technical support team uh, full of product specialists here to help you. They're all local right here in-house and they can be available through phone, email, chat in a limited capacity. We've got dedicated customer success managers that are assigned at each account based on your um, level and how much you're looking to raise and they come with tons of ideas and best practices and common pitfalls. And on top of that, we have a third layer where you're assigned an engagement specialist that helps onboard you in the first two weeks to make sure that you get your first campaign up and running uh, the best possible way that you can. So I go on and on. There's so many things. And uh, if you wanted to know anything in particular, you can always let us know. But those are some of the things that at least stand out to me. Great. That's really helpful. Um, uh, right now, it doesn't look like we have a lot of other questions. Um, there's been some really, really specific ones I think we may um, uh, talk talk through you know after the fact we may reach out to you guys some of you individually and, and handle some of those more support related um questions so i'm going to jump in now um and uh i'm going to hit a little bit on how the integration works um and then kind of show you how some of the data comes over from classy into kindful and then a couple of really key things you can do with it and so, um, you know, to, to understand the integration, so we built this integration, we've been working on it, um, the relationship with Classy for probably about 18 months. And um, we've really, really enjoyed working with Classy and something we've wanted to do for a really long time. And then it finally kind of made sense. And so about six months ago, maybe a little longer, we launched our, our first version of our Classy integration um, with Kindful. And so what you'll notice here is that um, right now our, um, we're still in our first phase of our Classy integration, but um, how the integration works is we're pulling information from Classy into Kindful. And I'm going to show you here in just a minute exactly some of the some of the details that we're we're pulling in, and how then you can use some of that information in Classy. And then Kindful, you know, we started from day one with this idea that we can't be all things to all people. And so what we really want to be is the place where you store all of your donor information, um, whether that's online or offline donations, and then allow you to plug in best in class tools that you can use to do, to sometimes take action, to raise funds, things like that. Kindful does have some basic fundraising tools built in. So we do have an online fundraising page and things like that. But what Classy does is take all of that all of those type of um, tools to an insanely better level, like in a really awesome. And, and you saw all the customization and things that Brad showed you that you can do with Classy and how you can create a world-class experience with Classy on how to raise funds online, how to do peer-to-peer, -peer, how to hold, how to do tickets for events, things like that. Um, we can do some of those things, just not as robust as Classy. But once you pull information in the Kindful, then you can do a lot of different things with it. You can integrate with tools like MailChimp or Emma or Constant Contact. You can push your donations from Classy directly into QuickBooks. You might be pulling in, like maybe um, you're doing your online fundraising through Classy, but at your event you're checking some people out through Square to buy some some uh, some some uh, merchandise or stuff like that. You can pull that data into Kindful. And so really, what you're able to do is get a full picture. And so what I want to do is try to illustrate a little bit of this. Um, really quickly in the product. So first off, um, I did want to highlight this. We, we recently uh, have the Chicago Police Memorial Foundation that chose to use Kindful 
And I thought this was a great quote. They just said, we chose Kindful because of the integration with Classy. Being able to have a beautiful donation pages on Classy and easy reporting is key to our success. I would recommend the Classy and Kindful integration to anyone looking for top-notch programs. And I think that really just encapsulated what we're trying to do with this integration. We know that you can do beautiful donation pages and peer-to-peer -peer with Classy, and then we want to be able to give you the ability to take that data and do a lot with it and build those better relationships. So I'm going to, real quick here, jump into um, our test Classy account. Now, I want to be really clear. Um, this is a very basic account. It only has 68 donors in it, but it's just the, the goal here is just to show a little bit of information of how this data flows over. So I'm gonna. Um, so what I'm, where I'm at now is in class, back in where Brad was in Classy's tool, and I'm looking at a donation, a transaction, a specific transaction that came through from Lara Lynn on June 6, 2019. Right. So when I click into this in Classy, so I'm still in the Classy platform. What I'm able to see, right, is that on June 6, um, Lara Lynn gave $105 and they gave it to the campaign that is actually said donate where it's most needed. So this might be a campaign that an organization may have. It's just like their, their key donation button on their website, right? Where it's a little bit more of like, I'm just giving to the organization. So this is a specific campaign around donate where it's most needed, right? And so let's go through, and I wanna specifically show you, so I'm jumping over into the Kindful platform and I want to go find Lara Lynn. Um, so I'm able to type in, we have this um, um, search bar that allows you to find anything in Kindful. What I'm able to do is I'm able to grab Lara Lynn and look at her profile, right? And so the first thing you're going to see is that um, in Kindful, I'm able to see that Lara Lynn has given $105 from a lifetime contribution, a lifetime household contribution of $105, and I'm able to see that Lara became a contact with Kindful on June 4th. So that's kind of interesting. She gave the first time on June 6th, but she actually became a contact on June 4th. So how could that happen, right? It might be that on June 4th, she actually um, you know, joined their mail list with MailChimp and became a contact in Kindful because she had joined their mail list. And then they sent them, let's say, a piece of information or, or an appeal, and that um, made them made her decide to give the $105 on June 6th. All right, and so what I'm able to see here is if um, Lara, let's say, had given before via a check, or if she'd given, a, 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 like I said, went to an event and given at Square, I would see all those transactions here. So not only am I going to see my classy transactions, I'm also going to see, like, if she wrote us a check, um, how much she's given in her lifetime, not just from Classy, but from all of her different gifts. And then I'm actually going to down here be able to see like her recent activity. So if you were to have sent her a MailChimp campaign, I'd see if she, what email she received and did she open it and things like that, right? Then over here to the right, I'm going to be able to see related contacts and we'll see like maybe Lara um, has has a, a, a child that um, that also gives or came to an event and let's say they came to a 5k and both of them have bought tickets I'd be able to connect the two of them here um, I can see that she so far has only supported the donate where it's needed most campaign if she um, if I identified that she was a major giver I might be able to get her to pledge and track an open pledge here and things like that so I'm really going to be able to like I said to bring everything from Classy and combine it with all the other ways that people might be giving to my organization. Um, it doesn't show up well here, but if you're interested, we'd love to show you like on a personal demo. But what another thing that you might find is we have donor search data built into Kindful. So when someone gives through Classy and we capture their, their uh, address information and stuff like that, we will be able to search the donor search database and actually see some of their wealth information and that's all public data that donor search is aggregating for us but starting to bring in so you can actually see a little bit about the propensity to give and we have an add-on product where you're actually able to see a lot of detail about the propensity to give and so this is kind of what i'm trying to represent here is all the ways that we're gathering information about lara lynn 
uh, from Classy and from other sources. Right? And then um, that's just the overview. What you get into here is like their profile where you get into very specific information. You can create um, specific fields, um, custom fields, things like that. So there's a lot of uh, robustness here. The other thing I wanted to show you really quickly was if I come over and I click on contacts, this is where in Kindful, you are able to actually start to sort and segment contacts, right? So um, one of the things I want to look to real quick is, for example, if I want to see everybody who had given to the same campaign that um, Lara Lynn had given to, which I think was where, uh, where it's most needed, um, what was the name of that one? Donate where it's most needed. So um, if I start to type in donate, so that campaign's going to pop up, and in live time, it's going to show me that 27 contacts in my organization have given to that campaign. And so this is where, um, if you remember early in the presentation, Brad had mentioned that one of the most important things you can do for your donors is to segment them, right? And so this is where you'll be able to come in and clearly segment who all has given to a certain campaign. And so... What I would be able to do, sorry, my little um, GoToWebinar thing is getting in my way here. So there where, what I could do is just hit select all. And then I'm going to be able to add them to a group in Kindful. Um, and at this point, let's say uh, add selected contacts to a group. I'm going to create a new group for donate um, where most needed. Um, let's say campaign and then click save. And then what that has done is it's come over here and created a group. So if I go look at my groups, I have this new group with 27 people in it. I'm able to click on this. And then now I'm able to see specific stats for all those people. Um, and I can see that some people that are in that campaign actually gave to other campaigns as well. So this is one of our group reports where you're actually able to start seeing more specifically that I've raised $748.75 uh, from this group of individuals. And so this is just, I, I just wanted to illustrate a little bit about what, what you can do there. And then from this group, you can start to do things like sending letters, doing um, mail merge, um, sending um, a, a MailChimp or Emma or Constant Contact campaign. You can easily export this data if you needed to and, um, and, and be able to provide it to like your, your executive director or your team. So there's a lot, a lot of things you can do there with that data. Now, I know um, my goal here wasn't today was to show a full demo of Kindful because of time limitations. That typically takes about an hour, 30, 45 minutes to an hour. I just want to show what you can do with some of the data that's coming over from Classy. And so um, I haven't looked at questions for a few seconds, so I'm going to jump in here and see if we had any specific questions. I'm just going to jump back over to my deck um, and you know, just pop up this question slide for, for uh, um, so that we all know that that's where we are in the process. And so, um, Brad, do you have any questions like off, off the bat while I look here and see if we have any specifically from, um, from, our, uh, from our audience? Yeah, I was going to ask um, if you could quickly just let us know or let the audience know you know, how long it takes to get the integration set up before data can start moving into Kindful? I'm sure that's one of the more common questions they get. Sure. So that's, um, uh, and I apologize. I, for some reason, I've lost my go-to meeting, um, my go-to meeting tool here. So I'm having a little bit of a hard time seeing uh, details about, um, there, there we go, my control panel. Um, and so the integration, so you do have to have API access through Classy. And so that's something um, that you would reach out to their team. And once they give you API access, it's a, it, it's a pretty simple process. You just go through and you tell Kindful a few, um, uh, if, you're, if you're not very technical savvy, you tell Kindful like um, your login information and what's called an API key. And that just kind of lets Classy know when the Kindful system calls over to Classy system, lets you know what account or what API uh, group of information to call from. And then it's pretty, um, 
it's pretty simultaneous. Like you, you put all that information in and it's going to pull your full history and all of your information over into Kindful of all your donations that you've that you've received in the past through Classy. And then um, and then it's going to record everything moving forward. Um, I think it updates about every hour. So within an hour, you're going to have all the information over from Classy into Kindful. Um, and so it's you know pretty automated. And then you're going to be able to, like I said, start to segment all those campaigns. Any campaigns you've built in Classy are going to automatically sync. So it's not a thing where you need to go build all the matching campaigns in Kindful. It's just going to pull down all that information and show it directly in um, in Kindful. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, so we've got a couple questions here. If you'll give me just a second. Um, I'm going to uh, see, you know, which ones we, we might want to. So I just answered is, is the integration real time. So it's not exactly real time, but it's pretty, you know, um, it, at most it's going to be every hour. And so um, it, it's not, I don't believe it's 100% uh, real time. Um, so someone asked uh, in Kindful, how do donations via check captured? We have a really simple way for you to actually just enter a check or enter a batch transaction. So if you got a batch from your bank or from your accountant or something of transactions you want to enter, you can enter them in batch or individually. We'll need to, will uh, donors need to have two accounts, one with Kindful and one with Classy? Um, so uh, yes, the donors would need to have two accounts. Or, I mean, not the, um, not not necessarily the donors. And so I do think, uh, and you asked, will the donors need two accounts? So I would say no. And so the reason I say this is because um, if you're going to choose to use Classy as your online fundraising presence for how you raise funds online, you would likely use Classy's uh, donor account and um, for, for all those type of transactions. And one of the most um, significant reasons that people need, donors need to have a, uh, a donor portal or a way to log in is typically to update things like their credit card, update their recurring giving amounts and stuff like that. And so. I would say that you would probably use Classy's uh, donation amount, and then um, you as an administrator uh, would use the back end, uh, uh, Kindful's back end. Um, sorry, we'll do another. Um, I, I think, you know, we uh, the rest of the questions we have are pretty specific, and we're running up on the end of time here, and I want to make sure that we do hit on this last slide so you know how to get a little bit more information from both of us. And so again, if we haven't answered your question, we're going to get back with you. Um, I'll make sure the Classy team gets the, the questions that only they can uniquely answer. And um, we'll be we'll be sharing this information with them who asks questions and they'll reach out if they think it's one specifically that they can answer. And um, uh, otherwise, if it's something that Kindful needs to answer, we'll be in touch to answer those as well. Give us about 24, 24 hours. We've got to download all the data, segment it out, and get it to the right teams. So um, if, you, if you don't hear from us within about 24 hours, feel free to reach out to either the Classy team or the Kindful team for more information. So lastly, Brad, can you um, really quick here, do you mind just giving a little bit of information about how folks can get in touch with Classy if they are interested in learning more about Classy? And yeah. it sounds like you guys might have a pretty uh, interesting offer here for some folks. Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks so much for the time, everybody. I appreciate it. Um, and thanks, Bradley, for coordinating. Yeah, so um, if you're uh, if you're interested in learning more about Classy, uh, you can contact us through either our phone or email, or uh, what I would do if I were you, I would go to that landing page right there, go.classy.org forward slash webinar dash kindful. So take take a look at that. That'll drop you into a form. Uh, and that form basically says, get in touch with us. We'll, you know, we'll walk through some stuff, answer questions, maybe give you a demo, have a few conversations. And if you're on this webinar today and you end up signing up with us before the end of October, we'll give you a full free month um, on the platform. And for some organizations, it's quite a big savings, uh, depending on what package they end up choosing. So um, please get in touch with us if you can. And literally, no, there's no like, this isn't any kind of pressure sales conversation at all. We just want to talk to you and, and see if we might be able to help you um, either currently or, or down the line. So thanks again. Yeah, thanks, Brad, so much for, for joining us. And, and I'll echo a little bit of what Brad said here. I think one of the reasons we love working with Classy so much is I truly do believe both Kindful and Classy want to provide the best experience for both nonprofits and their donors. And so if you want to learn more about either of our tools, please reach out to us. 
um, we're, we're looking to see if we can serve you and help you do better. And if we can't, um, then we're going to let you know that, right? And so also for a limited time um, with Kindful, if you sign up um, for new customers only right now, if you sign up, we'll actually upgrade you to the next plan level for free. So um, Kindful's pricing is based on um, how many contacts you're storing in Kindful. So in most cases, you know, we're actually um, sometimes 5Xing the number of contacts that you're able to have for the price of uh, the lower the lower tier. So I know that's something that gives you plenty of room to grow and lets you know um, what your budget's going to be, you know, for the uh, for the coming years. So, um, well, Brad, thanks again for joining us. I'll let everyone get off here. I know we used up the whole time today, so thank you if you took the time to stay with us and um, have a great uh, rest of the rest of the week and happy fundraising to everyone. Yeah, thank you.